What is going on guys? Welcome to another video on my channel here, Licious. If you guys are new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe and stay tuned on the latest hair loss treatments, current research on hair loss treatments in the pipelines, hair transplant topics, and my minoxidil beard growth journey. A couple days ago, I had a viewer from my channel who told me that Polychem had just finished their phase three trials for topical finasteride last month. And I did make a few videos on topical finasteride on my channel, but I never really discussed about polychem so I will go ahead and talk about the company and what they are actually currently doing I probably didn't talk about polychem previously in any of my videos since we already are aware that topical finasteride is currently being sold in several countries there are some hair transplant clinics that actually sell those too but polychem actually completed their phase 3 clinical trials recently so it would be interesting to see what the results were as well as the clinical trials that they conducted so polychem is a switch pharmaceutical company Company that started their interest in their topical version P3074 a few years back, which is their 0.25 topical finasteride product for treating androgenetic alopecia. Now, we all know that a small percentage of people who do take finasteride have sexual side effects from using oral finasteride or propecia. So Polychem carried out a test for safety and efficacy as well as to see how topical finasteride affects scalp and serum DHT levels and also to see if sexual side effects are minimized through topical use on the scalp as opposed to taking finasteride orally. Um, and this was conducted after uh, their one week of study. So we assume that topical application results in fewer side effects than oral consumption of finasteride medication. And the nice thing about this company is that they tested out the results to see how effective topical application of finasteride is, as well as to see if it can actually lower systemic side effects from using topical version of finasteride. So as you guys are aware, finasteride one milligram oral tablet is a type two alpha reductase inhibitor, which blocks the conversion of testosterone into DHT. And it typically results in about 60 to 70% reduction in serum, prostate and also scalp DHT levels. Finasteride helps increase hair count as well as improve the hair appearance. And for many people, they are actually able to maintain the hairs that they have for many years. Uh, with some people even seeing regrowth in balding areas. Generally, one milligram of finasteride is well tolerated with long-term use. Although we do have a small percentage of people that end up getting you know, adverse side effects, most of them being sexual, um, you know, sexual dysfunction, decreased libido, erectile dysfunction, ejaculation disorders, etc. So as you guys know, I used to take finasteride. I stopped recently because um, I'm trying to have a child with my wife. I don't have any side effects, nothing like that. So I just wanted to get that out of the way before you guys ask me why I stopped finasteride. As a result, um, 0.25 topical formulation of finasteride P3074 was studied, which allows finasteride to act on the scalp skin follicular portion of the bulb and to promote a cutaneous depot of finasteride into the region of the hair bulbs, minimizing the systemic absorption even after repeated treatments of topical finasteride. So a few years back, Polychem actually conducted a study to find out the effects of finasteride of 0.25% topical solution on the scalp and also serum DHT. And the study showed that after one week treatment with one milliliter of P3074, applied twice a day to the scalp with finasteride, one milligram orally once a day resulted in similar plasma DHT reduction. So notably, plasma finasteride rate and the extent of systemic absorption were 10 to 15 times lower for the topical solution than for the oral tablet. You know, as a result, they further investigated the systemic and local scalp DHT suppression effects of P3074, topically applied at different dose regimens as well as different doses. So they actually conducted two different test. The first one was to investigate whether multiple applications of one milliliter of P3074 once daily resulted in an inhibition of scalp and serum DHT similar to that obtained with twice a day application and also with one milligram of oral finasteride. So we had 18 men who received one milliliter of P3074 applied to the scalp once a day or twice a day or one milligram of oral finasteride tablet once a day for one week. Now there was also a second subsequent test which evaluated whether lower dosages of P3074 applied to the scalp could achieve the same inhibitory effect on scalp DHT levels, minimizing at the same time the systemic effects on serum DHT. So they had 32 men who received P3074 at the dose of 100, 200, 
300 or 400 microliters for the vehicle for one whole week. Now the scalp and serum DHT and serum testosterone were evaluated at baseline and treatment end. And the results showed that change from the baseline and scalp DHT was lowered by 70% for those who were using P307 for topical and approximately about 50% for P307 for twice a day and the tablet. Now serum DHT decreased by about 60 to 70% and for the dosages of 100 to 200 microliters of P3074 resulted in anywhere from 47 to 52% respectively in scalp DHT reduction similar to the 300 and 400 microliter dosages which were anywhere from 37 to 54%. A negative 5.6% inhibition was observed for the vehicle. Now serum DHT which is important since the more serum DHT that is inhibited by finasteride the more likely that you guys are going to end up having side effects. The good thing is it was only reduced anywhere from 24 to 26% with the 100 and 200 microliters of P3074 and by about 44 to 48% using the 300 and 400 microliters of P3074. So there were no relevant changes that occurred for serum testosterone and the finasteride 0.25% topical solution applied once daily at the dosages of 100 and 200 microliters resulted in an appropriate inhibition of scalp DHT potentially minimizing the unwanted sexual side effects linked to systemic DHT reduction. This part is more relatively interesting because with a less concentrated solution, we could eliminate nearly 50% of scalp DHT for only eliminating about 25% serum DHT as a trade-off, which means that there are going to be fewer side effects. And for reference, the usual dosage of Propecia or Finasteride 1 milligram eliminates anywhere from 70% scalp DHT and also about 70% serum DHT. This obviously won't be as effective as oral Finasteride, but it doesn't affect serum or blood DHT levels as much as it does with oral finasteride. Remember that this is only for the 100 and 200 microliters of the 0.25 topical finasteride formulation. Now, phase 3 trials for Polychem released last month where they actually had three different groups tested. The first group was using P3074 containing 0.25% finasteride with one milligram finasteride placebo. The second group was using P3074 vehicle with one milligram finasteride placebo. And the last group was using oral finasteride one milligram with P3074 vehicle. Now phase three assessed the hair growth assessed by target area hair count in the vertex at week 24 using macro photographic techniques analysis. And it turned out that there really wasn't as much difference between the topical and oral finasteride treatment, but it did show that topical finasteride may be just as effective as oral finasteride. And the other thing is the study didn't really characterize systemic DHT levels. Instead, the study conducted a questionnaire on erectile function and orgasmic function at various weeks, which also really didn't show no real difference between the topical and the oral finasteride. Now, I don't really get why Polychem was doing with her phase three study since testing serum DHT activity in their topical application after 24 weeks should have been their main goal and also to see if it would you know, limit side effects and as well as serum DHT. So the thing is these questionnaires are subjective and since they're not scientific, we should always take it with a grain of salt. But let me go ahead and refer back to the initial studies that was previously done. Topical finasteride 0.25% and one milligram oral finasteride seems to have comparable results in inhibiting DHT overall. It may be just as effective as oral finasteride, but based on prior studies, it does seem that a smaller dosage of 100 to 200 microliters of 0.25 finasteride topical resulted in an appropriate inhibition of scalp DHT, potentially minimizing the unwanted sexual side effects linked to a systemic DHT reduction. So I'm not sure when Polychem is going to go ahead and release their product, but it might be something that you guys can look into or consider if you guys are looking into taking topical finasteride with hopefully fewer side effects. So Polychem's topical finasteride P3074 is also formulated in hydroxypropyl chitosan film forming technology that allows finasteride to act on the scalp skin. It seems to be different to other finasteride topicals that you guys might see on the market or maybe you guys are seeing a topical version of finasteride that a hair transplant clinic is selling. So just be aware of that and if you guys are going to create your own finasteride uh, topical so just a word of caution, this test was only conducted in a one week study. 
So long-term side effects are still not going to be fully known. We also know that topical finasteride still goes systemic regardless of dosage, whether you go with 100 or 200 microliters of the 0.25% finasteride topical solution, which also means that serum DHT is still affected. Like I said, that does not mean that it's going to get rid of side effects. It definitely does lower the chances, but you still need to be aware that you can still be prone to, uh, to the side effects. I think those who are wary about taking finasteride Oral finasteride should you know consider taking the topical version and then work your way up. But that's just my opinion. Obviously, it's up to you guys whether you guys want to take finasteride or not. But it does does work, and based on the research, it shows that topical finasteride might also be a good alternative to oral finasteride because it does lower some of the serum DHT levels. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, please make sure to uh, leave me some comments below, and I will talk to you guys next time. Take care.